Hi, this is Brother Bryce. Today I will show you a quick view into one of our course starters. Let's first start out with a simple demo. So here's the starter page. Now we call these course starters because they, they give you a starting point and a backbone to begin your course. Every page is laid out for you. All you need to do is insert your own content and images and you will no longer have to worry about a look and feel and be being consistent with that brand. Simply add in your own text, throw in an image or two, move and copy around slides, and then your course is complete. So here it is, it's almost done. Here's a simple interaction slide, and then the conclusion, and that's it. When you download the course, you will see, let's open up the folder structure, but in the mix of it, you will see an AWT file right here. This is your actual Lectora document, and this is the one that you will open to start your course. Now, sometimes you will see another AWT with a tilde and dollar sign in front of it. And let me show you what that will look like. So let's see. If we move things around and make modifications inside the course, we come back to that same file structure, we'll see, again, uh, an, a tilde and a dollar sign in front of this AWT. Now, don't worry about that. Lectora will auto-save your work in case you forget to hit save. And that document is, to is the product of that. So uh, if you see it, let it be. Don't attempt to save it, open it, or, or even touch it. It'll go away once you save your document again. Now, when you open a, a Lectora document, the first thing people notice is the layering system they have on the left called the, the Title Explorer. Something to note, if you're a first-time Lectora user, anything at the top of the Title Explorer is actually at the bottom-most layer visually. So if you see, I have the background at the very top, but it's actually displaying at the bottom-most layer. It might seem a little backwards to you at first, but once you get into the tool and start using it, you'll see the logic behind it. Now let's start from the top and work our way down as we modify the course. And so let's start at the bottommost layer. And in fact, it's not the, the background like I said before. It's not the actual background image. It's the, uh, the color that's behind this image. And that's referred to the HTML color. Select Design. And then right here, you can see there's a color option. And you can change this to whatever you want. So if you ever wanted to use yellow or orange, my company color is orange, so maybe I want the color to be orange. And I can change that. And as you can see, this, this background image is actually just a PNG of uh, a little texture. So I can move this around, and you can see that it's a, a just a simple PNG transparent image. So if I put that back, but also if you've noticed, okay, let's zoom out so you can see a little bit better. Uh, this background is still that same uh, gray. And what I did is I just put a, um, a few shapes around it so so that it gives it a kind a, a, a mask look. And I'll show you a little bit more of what I mean by that. But we can change these colors on the sides very easily by selecting these mask layers, going to properties, and fill color. And we can see recent colors that we've used right here. And so uh, this was that same orange that we used. And so it's really that easy to change the color of uh, your background. Just that simple. Next, we'd probably want to change the logo. So let's go up here uh, and find the logo. Here's the company logo. And since it's actually a, an image, uh, there are two separate ways you can swap out an image. First is to replace it on the stage. And that's uh, you go to Properties, come down here to uh, Browse for File, and um, find your, your new logo that you want. I'll just put this one in and I can switch it out like that that's simple um, and then the second way and let's do that on the introduction uh, introduction logo so if we go to the introduction page 
select the the eLearning Brothers logo here and we can switch this out by instead of going here we can actually switch it out in that file structure that we downloaded earlier that I showed and if we go into the images folder these are all the fold or the all the images that are being used in the course currently so um, if we go down and find the uh, the company logo, which is right here, and you can find the actual actual name by co coming to the lo logo, the image, coming up here and seeing image, and this is the name. So companylogo.png, and then we open it up, companylogo.png, and we can see that it's actually in that folder. Now uh, watch what I do here. If I grab the same name, so company logo put it on my new logo okay and this is just right on my desktop so I'm just modifying that name in the desktop and uh, then grab that logo that I renamed drag it into the image folder now instead of using this that old image it is now using this new one and now let's see how that looks in Lectora now this comes in handy when you have several instances of the same image Say you have it in your course objectives and your conclusion. It will then replace them all when you have saved it into your image folder. Now the next thing to note is modifying text. Uh, modifying text is super easy. Uh, we have the text boxes already in there. If you want to insert another text box, it's just as simple as coming to insert, uh, selecting text box here, and then you can modify the text and what it is, what it looks like here. Um, in the home tab so uh, if we want to change this welcome uh, so welcome to uh, maybe welcome to new hire uh, hire uh, training All right uh, let's recenter that and so now we have a new title right there it's as simple as that as we move into the content slides, let's see here, let's open up one. You might have noticed that some of these slides had, a, um, had an image that would transition in or move in, and then after it was finished moving, it then viewed and displayed the text. And I'll show you how I did that. And so you can replicate it later and, um, and also um, make modifications to it. If you if you want, so first we have the the image that that moved in that uh, flew in. We select it, so this shade text box, um, come up to properties, and in transitions we can see there's a transition in. It says fly, so you can change the different types of uh, transitions to fly, flow, fade, a bunch of different other ones. These are the three that I primarily like to use. Uh, they look the most clean, I, I think. And then uh, you can change the uh, direction that that is flying in and from. And that's right here. Uh, another nice thing that Lectora has is uh, the effect that it has when it comes in to the stage. You can have it bounce, have it uh, be like an elastic band that shakes around a little bit when it comes in, uh, things like that. So uh, that's a lot of fun to play around with. and. Um, and see what exactly those transition effects do. Next is a delay. You can delay that uh, transition to, to take place after it's been shown, uh, however many seconds you want, and then the speed of it. So it, it gives you a lot of different modifications that you can do uh, to, to get the exact effect that you want. So super nice. Uh, a really quick way to duplicate that is just by selecting these two items pressing um, copying this control C and then you can paste it and have these same actions applied to it in any place that you want so if I if I made a new slide let's let's make a new slide go to home new page and then I pasted that exact thing this action also came with it because I copied the object that it was also associated with. Now let me show you uh, what I was meaning by that mask, uh, these shapes here, why these are here. So let's go ahead and select the page again and view it. 
as the image comes in, you can't see it until it reaches the content stage. Uh, there's a little space there where uh, I have the mask above the image, so you won't see it until it comes in. And that's simply what that is there for. All right, so now we're almost done with this, uh, with building out our course. All we have left is the interaction slide. Now the interaction slide, I love how we have these because all you need to do is like the content slides, add in the custom text. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you can see here I labeled it uh, introduction content and so that makes it a little bit more simple to find what, uh, what it is and where it is coming in at. And then down here I have each group. Um, in content, a uh, tab content, uh, labeled as one, two, three, four, five, and six. And in these groups, you can come in, change the content to whatever you want. So let's do that. My new content. Uh, oops, that's a W. And then another nice thing about this is, if say if you wanted a new um, image to come in with selecting that tab. All you need to do is bring in this image that you want. So I'm choosing this uh, cartoon character, girl character. Bring it into that group, tab one. Let's view this. Let's zoom out a little bit. While uh, an, an item or an object is inside a group, you can't, uh, typically you can't um, move that single item. Uh, the, all the items will come with it. However, if you hold down the Alt button and then move the single object, you can then just uh, just move that one and uh, not all the other things that are in that group. So something that's kind of nice. Okay, so now I put that image in this tab group, right? So now let's go ahead and view this and see what it looks like. So we have the, uh, the introduction content up here. Uh, we then can select all these other ones, but then when we select the tab one, all those things that were in that group appears. And then when you go to the next one, uh, it disappears and goes to the other group. Now as we go on, we go to get to the conclusion slide, adjust the text here, and uh, you're done modifying and, and creating your course. So I hope you learned something from this course starter tutorial. Give it a shot and keep creating awesomeness.